This video was sponsored by Morning Brew. Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. Welcome to my living room. Now, for about the past, let's be honest, six or seven years, I've been slowly remodeling our entire house. I ripped out the old carpet. There was this huge, ugly built-in on this wall. I ripped that out. It had a gas fireplace built into it that was loud and nasty and looked like something out of a 1980s horror film. Anyways, I got rid of all that, and now I'm left with this blank canvas here. My wife's been bugging me for a while to build another built-in to replace the old one. Now, instead of going all the way to the ceiling, this one's only gonna come up to right under the TV. It's gonna cover this giant hole in the wall left by the fireplace, which you probably can't see because we strategically placed this plant in front of it. Anyways, follow along, watch the video, learn how to make a built-in, and subscribe down below. This video is gonna cover the entire construction of the built-in cabinet, and in my next video, after this one, it's gonna cover the painting process and the actual cabinet installation. So, watch this one and stay tuned for the next one coming out in the coming weeks. All right, to the video. White snow, red sky, reach so here she is. Well, at least what we want her to look like in the end. I put the entire thing on SketchUp to get my measurements exactly how I want them. There's gonna be four separate boxes that make up little cabinet doors on the top, drawers on the bottom, there's gonna be inset panels on each box along the back side, decorative casing on the one visible end, and that's about it. With it on SketchUp, I quickly make a little cut sheet. I know there's a feature on SketchUp where you can just print this out, but I just like to do it old school. Anyways, before we get too much further, let's get the ad read out of the way. This video is sponsored by Morning Brew. Before Morning Brew, my mornings were pretty pathetic. I would stand for hours just staring out the window, wishing I had something to occupy my mind. But then I found Morning Brew. Now I can't wait to run downstairs, grab a cup of coffee, and get on my phone to check out the latest in business news. Since I started reading Morning Brew, it's crazy the amount of things I've learned, like what bitcoins are. And spoiler alert, they're not just smaller pieces of regular coins. It keeps me up to date on how the stock market's doing, it's witty, it's funny, and most importantly, it's a quick, easy read, which is all I want out of a news source. If you're interested in business, finance, or tech, there's literally no reason not to subscribe to Morning Brew. It's completely free and takes less than 15 seconds to sign up. Click the link in the description below to subscribe to Morning Brew today. With our cut sheet laid out, it's time to start, well, cutting pieces. To make this cabinet, we're going to be using this beautiful specimen, A1 birch plywood. Isn't she lovely? The nice thing about cabinets is your width is typically very consistent, whether that be your side pieces or your cross brace pieces. So I set my table saw to that desired width, in this case 15 and a half inches, and I just start slicing up my plywood. After I slice it all up on the table saw to get long sheets of 15 and a half inch pieces, I take it over to the chop saw and I break them down. Sure, I could use a track saw and do this in one pass, but if there's one thing you've learned from watching my videos, it's probably that I'm pretty lazy. So I just cut halfway through on the chop saw and then flip it over and cut the remaining distance. Once I have all my pieces cut, we have to add a quarter inch groove. Oh, no, we're not there yet. Then I cut down some three and a half inch pieces that will be all my little internal brace pieces connecting the cabinets and giving them strength. So yeah, I cut down a bunch of three and a half inch pieces. And then I have all my pieces cut and I'm ready to start prepping them to hook together. Okay, here's where we get to the quarter inch groove. We gotta put a quarter inch groove on all of our pieces to house our back quarter inch panel. So I take a quarter inch setup block and a half inch setup block. Now this is where I make a huge mistake. I built cabinets like this a hundred times. I know I need a quarter inch setup block and a three quarter inch setup block. But for some reason here, stupidly, I grab the half inch setup block 
and yes, it will come back to bite me later. But dumb, naive Jason doesn't know that yet, so just don't bother him. Let him live in ignorant bliss for now. We're running this groove to house the quarter inch panel on the back of our cabinets. So with our saw blade set at a quarter of an inch, I run it through first to make an eighth inch gap. And then I slide the saw blade over and I run it through again to get my quarter of an inch. Why not just do it in one pass with a dado stack? Well, by doing two passes, I can really fine tune that distance and make sure it's a nice tight fit on my quarter inch panel. With all of the grooves cut to house that back panel, it's time to cut the larger groove to hold our internal shelf. So I insert a dado stack with a 3 quarter inch dado, and then I cut a test piece and make sure it's a nice tight fit on all my panel pieces. And then I, I hit it a ridiculous amount of times with a mallet. You know, just a... I don't know why I did this. Just keep hitting it, Jason, you moron. But anyways, that's a nice tight fit. So then I take half of my pieces and with that quarter inch groove at the top, I run them through the table saw. Now you could use a router to do this exact same thing, but the table saw is quick and easy. I wouldn't want to do this on any pieces longer than this though. This is about at my max of running them through on the table saw and still feeling comfortable. After doing all of our pieces with the groove at the top, we take the other half of our pieces, making sure the groove is at the bottom, and we do the exact same thing. These will make up the two sides of our boxes. That being said, I should say that you're only running this dadoed groove on your side pieces, not your internal shelf. There's no need for a dado on your internal shelf. Next, we're gonna take all of our three and a half inch connecting pieces, and we're gonna drill pocket holes in them. Why, God, why? Well, it's because pocket holes are amazing for one thing, and that's building cabinets. So I take all those pieces and I just start drilling them out until I have all of them ready to go for hooking my cabinet together. Then with all of our pieces cut and prepped, we can start hooking our boxes together. I start by applying a little glue into that cut dadoed slot, and then I will insert my cross shelf piece and pound it down with a mallet. So I get everything lined up, my grooves are lined up on the back side, and then I can just hit it in place. If I could find my mallet, my mallet bangy thing. I don't know. Oh, jeez, it's way the heck over here. Oh, I got it. All right, so when I set my cross shelf, what I like to do is I like to just tap it in so it's just barely seated. Now, it's a lot easier to seat this fully once it's flipped over and you're banging on the outer side piece instead of that three quarter inch panel. Plus, you don't want to chip up your veneer by just smacking away on that three-quarter inch shelf. So once I get it seated, then I flip the whole thing over and I will hammer it home from the other side. This is just a much bigger surface to get the mallet on and you're not going to break or damage anything. Once that's nice and seated in there, tight, I flip it over and then I add these woodpeckers clampy 90 degree angle thingy-mabobs. These are great when you're putting together cabinet boxes because they just ensure everything stays nice and square while you're connecting all your parts and pieces. I'll leave a link to these in the video description below. Then with those clamped on so I know my cross panel is square, I just countersink a few screws right into that cross panel from the outside. I'm just using inch and a half screws. You don't need a lot. These are just in place of clamps while that glue dries. Then once you get one side done, you do the exact same thing to the other side. Add a little glue, insert your panel, and then you don't usually have to flip it over on this go because you got a nice big surface to get your mallet on already. So once I get that smacked in nice and tight, I add some more woodpeckers clampy things to the other side, and I hook that side in with a few more screws. With our internal shelf nice and secure, we can start adding all of our little brace pieces that will just sure up our cabinet, give it some strength, as well as give us a surface to attach it to the wall 
when we get to installing it. So first I install this little brace piece right under the shelf. I just add a little glue, clamp it to the shelf, and then I hook it in place with some pocket screws. Then I like to send a few trim head screws right through the top of the shelf into that brace piece just to hold it nice and tight. This also helps square up your whole cabinet. Once I have that done, I flip the cabinet on its face and I add a few support pieces to the bottom. We'll eventually be adding some more support pieces to the top, but we're not gonna do that yet because we want to be able to slide our quarter inch panel into the back of our cabinet. So once we get one brace piece done, we flip it over and of course we do the other brace piece. And then because this cabinet is made up of four identical boxes, when you get one box done, you just move on to the other three and do the exact same thing until all four of your boxes are complete. Then with all of your boxes complete, you can, well, line them up and begin to get an idea of the overall size of your built-in. So you set one down and then another. I don't need to explain this. It's obvious what I'm doing. I'm just lining all the boxes up together like this. This is gonna be our built-in. Cabinet doors on the top and drawers on the bottom. So with all of our boxes complete to this point, we can start ripping down our pieces to insert as our back panels. For this, I'm using a piece of quarter inch birch ply. So I start by ripping it down to the correct height on the table saw. Then I can take this long piece and I can cut it up into smaller pieces that are the correct width to slide into each one of my cabinets. For this, I'm just using the track saw and I don't even clamp the track on there. I just set it on there and go for it. If it's off a little bit, it doesn't matter as long as it's covered up by your quarter inch groove on either side. And boom, you just slide it in there, then wash, rinse, repeat on all your remaining cabinet boxes. You might be wondering, why am I doing four separate boxes? Why don't I do one long box or two longer boxes? Well, it's because it's way easier to install this in four separate pieces than one giant piece you gotta try and maneuver into place and carry through doorways. With four separate pieces, the installation will be a breeze and I will show you how to accomplish that and still make it look like one giant connected piece when you're all done. So with all of our back panels cut and inserted, we're going to lock them in place with these little three and a half inch brace pieces we cut. Now four of those brace pieces should have gotten a quarter inch groove for this exact purpose. They sit on top of that panel, holding it in place nice and tight and are secured with, yep, pocket screws. Then we add the front brace piece. Now you could have totally added this front brace piece earlier. It doesn't get in the way of you inserting that back panel at all, but it's just easier to do it when all your cabinets are upright in the same position rather than trying to fumble with it when your cabinets laid down on your workbench. But you do you, whatever is easiest. I mean, if it works, it works. Then with all of our brace pieces in place, we just have a few more pieces to add on the back of our cabinet. Now these are what is called a nailer strip. They're little strips that we can send some screws through to hook the cabinet securely to the wall. There'll be one on the top and the bottom. And this is why we set that quarter inch groove a half inch. Oh crap. Remember when I said I should have used a three quarter inch? Yeah, it's because all my little cross brace pieces are three quarter inch. And because I only did a half inch, they stick out. Boo. Luckily, I had some half inch stock laying around. So I cut some new brace pieces that were only a half inch thick and I inserted them into place. Not that big of a mistake. I was just being dumb. So keep that in mind. However far you inset that quarter inch groove is how much room you're gonna have to insert your nailer strips. So if you inset it three quarters of an inch, well then you can use all your three quarter inch ply. If you do it a half inch like idiot Jason, well you're gonna have to cut some half inch ply, but we got it done in the end. After installing my upper and lower pieces with pocket screws, I send some more of these trim head screws right through the top just to snug everything up. Now, as I mentioned before, 
we're gonna leave these in four separate pieces to make installing them much, much easier. We can just carry each individual box into the house when we need to put it in place. But for now, we want them all hooked together so that we can get our face frame and drawers and cabinet doors all figured out without them flopping all over the place. So after clamping them together nice and tight, making sure they're lined up well, I send a few screws through the lower portion that you're not gonna see and one screw through the upper portion right under that top brace piece. This will be hidden behind the face frame and you're not gonna see it either. So I just do that to all my cabinet boxes, hooking them together nice and securely. And with that, the carcass of our built-in is complete and it is time to start working on our face frame. For the face frame, I'll be using three quarter inch poplar. Poplar is my go-to wood of choice whenever I'm doing a paint grade piece. It's easy to work with and it paints very, very nicely. When laying out my face frame, I always do my end pieces first. Those will run top to bottom, you won't see any end grain, and then we'll build the entire face frame in between those two outer pieces. So once I get the piece cut to the appropriate height, I like to clamp it in place right on the edge of my cabinet exactly where I want it. Now you might be looking at this and thinking, hey, that seems a little short. Yeah, I do this by design. I always leave it an eighth of an inch short so we have a little wiggle room during installation top to bottom there's a bow in the floor or something like that we can move it around so that it fits perfectly once I get the right side done I do the exact same thing on the left side the only difference is the left side is the side that's gonna come in contact with the wall so I notch out this little quarter inch groove on that side of the cabinet this means that that quarter inch piece is gonna be the only point that contacts the wall this makes scribing your cabinet to fit the wall so much easier because you can just knock down that little quarter inch tab with your sander and you don't have to worry about scribing a full three quarter inch piece. Next I measure to determine the distance between my two outer pieces and I cut down a piece to fit in between them. Now you only need to take a measurement on either your top or bottom. Figure out that distance cut it make sure it's nice and tight and then cut your other piece don't take separate measurements on your top and your bottom or your piece isn't going to be square you can get away with your cabinet carcasses being a little out of square but you definitely want your face frame to be perfect because that's what you're going to be setting all your doors and drawers off of once I get my two cross pieces cut to length I screw some more pocket holes and I begin attaching my face frame together just with a little glue and a clamp holding it firmly to my table and then I well just screw it in place making a nice outer frame that we can build our internal face frame off of next we need to cut our vertical divider pieces now whenever you're cutting these pieces you always want to get your measurement off of one of your ends that internal distance you don't want to take it in the middle of your face frame because the wood might be bowed and you're not going to get an accurate measurement if it's too long or short it's going to push or pull your entire face frame out of square so take the measurement nice and tight against that outer piece and make sure it fits in there nice and snug once you get that measurement, you know you can place that inside your face frame and it will be the correct distance. Now, to get everything spaced out and even and nice and square, this is how I like to do it. I like to cut these little spacer blocks. I know that I'm going to have four different sections, so I do the math to determine how much space I need in between those, and I cut a spacer block and I space out all of my vertical little divider pieces. If you do this correctly, by the time you get to the end of your face frame, your spacer block should fit nice and snug in that last space. This will tell you that all of your pieces are spaced exactly even. Then all you have to do is take that spacer block and cut an identical piece the exact same length. Then using these two pieces, when you inset your vertical divider pieces, you put one spacer at the bottom, one spacer at the top. Not only will this ensure that your pieces are perfectly spaced out, it'll also ensure that they're set perfectly square. Remember when I said you want to make sure your face frame is perfectly square? Yeah, that's definitely the most important 
important part of any cabinet build. If your face frame's not square, your whole cabinet's not gonna be square. So take the time, do it right, and get everything lined up perfect. As you can see, I'm using clamps to hold everything firmly in place to ensure that by the time I get to the end, after hooking all those vertical dividers in place, I still have a nice snug fit with that spacer block. Now I know everything is perfect. And then I do the exact same thing for my drawer dividers, only the spacers are going up and down instead of left to right. I also know that my drawer divider piece is the exact same size as my spacer block. I'm actually using one of the spacer blocks as my drawer divider piece. So I clamp that down, make sure that it's spaced out evenly, and I hook it in place with some pocket screws. And then I just work my way along, doing the exact same thing. I'm not even using a square or a tape measure. I'm just using those spacer blocks, and I know everything is even and perfectly square. And with that, our face frame is complete. Now we're not gonna hook it in place yet. We're actually not gonna hook our face frame on completely until our cabinet is installed. I'll show you how later, probably in the next video. But for now, we're just gonna clamp it in place so that it doesn't flop around while we figure everything out. Making sure that it is nice and tight against the top of our cabinet. Next, we're gonna take care of this little end cap. We got some exposed screws, we got the side of the face frame, and we wanna cover all this up and make it look pretty. So I take some of my poplar stock and I plane it down until it's nice and thin, about a quarter of an inch. And then we are going to just glue and tack this on the end of our cabinet with a 23 gauge pin nailer. Now our front piece is gonna overhang the front of our face frame so that there's just a little quarter of an inch reveal on the front that we can sand and fill and make that seam completely disappear. Once I get it tacked in place, I pull my face frame back and I wipe off any excess glue squeeze out to make sure that we don't accidentally glue that face frame to that trim piece. We don't wanna do that yet, we'll do that later. Then I do the exact same thing for my back trim piece. But with this, I overhang it a quarter of an inch off the back of the cabinet. This is the second contact point with the wall, and we want to do the same thing we did here on the other end of our face frame. Leaving that quarter of an inch overhang makes a nice surface that will make shimming, not shimming, scribing so much easier. Now the idea in this decorative casing on the end is to mimic the size and dimension of your face frame. So we have the same width pieces on the outside as our face frame, and then we have the same width pieces on the top and bottom of our face frame. A little bit thicker on the top and bottom, a little bit skinnier on the sides. Next, we wanna make a piece that generally lines up with our drawer divider. Now you're not actually gonna see where this drawer divider starts and stops because it's gonna be overhung by the cabinets. So if you're off a 16th or an eighth of an inch, you, you won't be able to tell, but you want it close. So I use a square to just wrap it around the corner and I get it lined up, pop it in place, and I tack it down with the 23 gauge nailer. After, of course, making sure it's nice and square. You don't want it all cockeyed and slanted. Or maybe you do. I mean, who am I to tell you what kind of cabinet you wanna make? Maybe yours is artsy, I don't know. And just like that, our casing is done. I just like to clamp my face frame to that end to make sure it's gonna pull together nice and tight. Next, we need to drill out the holes for our shelf pins inside of our cabinet. I just use this little plexiglass template, I think I got it from Rockler, and I line it up and insert my shelf pins. You could drill a bunch more holes and make these shelves adjustable, but I know that I want my shelves right in the middle, so I'm just gonna drill a single hole for one pin. Anyways, because this is a paint grade piece, my shelves are nice and simple. I just cut a piece of the birch ply and taking a piece of the poplar stock, I glue and tack it on the front. I don't bother covering up the sides or the back. The shelf will always be inserted into the cabinet and you're never gonna see those sides, so don't waste your time. 
those holes will all get filled and these will get sanded before paint. But for now, I just set them in place and boom, shelves. Next, I pre-drill for all of my cabinet door hinges. And you might be wondering, well wait, aren't you gonna make cabinet doors? No, I already did, see? And if you're wondering, well, how did you make them? Well, you probably didn't watch my last video where I show you in detail exactly how I made these doors with inset glass. So if you wanna see exactly how I did it, go back and watch that video. I lay out the entire process in glorious detail. Whenever I have a face frame that overhangs my cabinet box and I'm doing overhang doors, I like to use these Euro style face frame hinges. They attach right onto the face frame. They're super easy to install. You just measure down how far you want the hinge to land with what overhang you want and you just screw them in place. Then if you need to adjust them slightly, the adjustability moves them back and forth or in or out. And so I just install all my doors and work my way across the entire piece until they are all done. Whenever I'm building cabinets with cabinet doors above and a drawer below, I always install my cabinet doors first. That way I can take the measurement off my cabinet doors to determine the size of my drawer below and get it exactly the same as the span of my cabinet doors. So with that measurement in mind, I head over to the table saw and I start making a few shaker style cabinet drawer faces. Now, I'm not gonna show you every stinking detail on how to do this because I've already made a video showing you just that. It's in part three of my cabinet building series. So if you wanna see exactly how to make a good shaker style door, I recommend after this video, you head over and watch that video. But basically, the shaker style door is made out of five pieces. You got four frame pieces called your rails and styles with this groove down the center of each one that will hold a floating panel and a tenon that connects all your frame pieces. Then for drawer faces, I like to take a piece of half inch MDF and I wrap it around all four sides. This creates a nice panel that I can slide into my frame, making it inset on one side and flush on the back side where I attach it to my drawer box. I'm using MDF because like I mentioned before, this is a paint grade piece and MDF paints very nicely. All right, enough dancing. Let's, let's keep going here. With all of my drawer face pieces cut, I glue them up and insert my panel. And once I get all of them done, I'm just gonna set them aside to dry. And while they dry, I can start working on my drawer boxes. To mount these drawers, I will be using Blum Undermount Drawer Slides. They're my go-to drawer slide. They work amazing and they are crazy easy to install. I like to cut a piece of ply the exact distance of the inside of my cabinet box. I slide it right up against my face frame and I mark where the face frame comes in contact with that piece. Then I take these mounting brackets that come with the undermount drawer slides. I line them up on those markings where my face frame is and I just screw them in place. Boom, nice and easy. Then I go to the back of my cabinet and I insert that piece flush with the back of my cabinet. Now I know those brackets are perfectly gonna line up with my face frame on the front because that's where I took my measurements from. Then I hold that piece in place just with a few handy dandy pocket screws. And then all I have to do is take my drawer slides, insert them into that bracket on the back, and boom, drawer slides are installed. It's really that easy. I didn't use a tape measure. I didn't have to fiddle around with spacers or this or that. All you have to do is hook the drawer slide to the front of your face frame with a little set screw and you are ready to boogie. And by boogie, I mean start building your drawer boxes. With your drawer slides installed, I take my measurements for my drawer box right off my slides. Now I'm just determining the overall width of my drawers. I know the length is gonna be determined by the drawer slide themselves. For this project, I'm using 15 inch drawer slides. So my drawer boxes are 15 inches deep by whatever the space is between my drawer slides. So I start cutting down all of my pieces. 
making sure that each piece has a nice quarter of an inch groove on the bottom of it to hold the bottom of my drawer box, which in this case is a piece of quarter inch Baltic birch ply. Well, the whole drawer is Baltic birch. Hey, if you wanna know exactly how to do these, there's a video on that as well in my cabinet building series. I show you step by step so you can make your own quick and easy Baltic birch drawer boxes. Birch, 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 birch. That's a funny word. With my drawer boxes done, I install the little Blum orange clip things in each corner and I slide them into my carcass. Then I just hammer them in there a few times just to imprint the little tab on the back of the drawer slide on the back of the drawer. Once I leave a little notch showing me where that tab is, I drill a little hole. This hole will catch that tab and hold the drawer firmly in place. Then all I have to do is insert the drawer back in and push until it clicks. And boom, drawer is installed. I mean, it's crazy easy. Why anyone's using side mounted drawer slides anymore, I don't know. Stop it. Seriously, stop it. About three minutes later, I have all my drawers installed and I am ready to start hooking on my drawer faces, which by this time are nice and dry and ready to be pulled out of clamps. Cut to shot of me pulling them out of clamps for continuity. All right, now let's get them installed. Whenever I'm installing overmount drawer faces, the easiest way to do it is by using these rockler drawer mounting clamp things. There's a right side, there's a left side, you hook them onto your drawer box, and then you just slide your drawer face in place. It's just, I mean, it's, it's simple. You don't have to use double-sided tape or clamps or anything. Well, I guess these are clamps. Anyways, you slide it into place, you get it lined up left to right. I like to use a spacer block. I know all my spaces on this are conveniently one inch, so I stick a one inch spacer block in there, make it nice and tight against my upper cabinet doors, and you just clamp it down. Then you open the drawer, screw the drawer face on, and boom. I feel like I'm saying boom a lot in this video. Sorry about that. Anyways, you take off your clamps, and your drawer face is installed. Man, so easy. Then you just keep doing the exact same thing, working your way down until all of your drawer faces are installed and it is looking nice and fresh. Boom, <laughs> sorry, I just wanna say it one more time. And there you have it. Our cabinet is completely built and ready to start breaking down for paint. Yes, it doesn't have a top on it yet, but we'll get to that in the next video when we install it. So, stay tuned. Boo! <laughs> Boo and scary. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed that video. Now you know how I like to put built-in cabinets together. But, we're not done yet. Stay tuned for the next video in this series where I'm going to show you how to paint this monstrosity. And install it and make it look all beautiful and finished in its new home in my house. That'll come out in a week or two. I mean, I still have to do all of that stuff I just said and film it and edit it. So you could be a little patient and not leave your comments down below that you need the video right now. I'm only human and I'm working on it. <laughs> but if you need something to do in the meantime, you could subscribe down below. Go follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok. Check out my website for plans, merchandise, all that stuff. Oh, and the video description for tools and supplies. Okay, until next time.